Micklow, and I'm here with the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, some of them. Introduce yourselves. I'm Tim, and I'm in the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. <laughs> I'm Joe Gittleman. I play bass in the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. <laughs> with your last record seven years ago but you're set to release a new one this summer what went into making this record and what's the theme of it I'll let Joe take this one he made this record you know a lot of a lot of work went into it a lot of work goes into all our records um, this time we were really sort of motivated we felt like we had some songs um, that we wanted to get out for this sort of t this time in history if you will um, there are certain things we wanted to say about the world and how we feel about the world and politics and that kind of stuff that we kind of really pushed ahead. Um, I was also on sabbatical from my teaching gig at Northern Vermont University, so that was one of my reasons for taking a sabbatical was to work on a Boston's record. So I had many reasons, but um, really getting together with these guys and working on music is is uh, never a bad idea, and so uh, we were uh, we were happy to do it. Awesome. I'm so excited for this new record. I love you guys so much. So to promote the record, you guys are actually going on tour this summer yes. and you're touring with some of my friends, Los Kung Fu Monkeys. Uh -huh. What are some of your favorite and least favorite parts of touring? Um, well, I mean, the funny thing is, and this is going to sound really boring, but a, a, a big part of the reason I think we like to get together and do shows, even stuff like this, is just because we like hanging out together. So we're good friends. We've been, we've known each other since we were teenagers. Um, we haven't developed many friendships outside of the band, <laughs> yeah. truth, truth be we're, told. We're pretty sad in that way. <laughs> we're gonna so I mean, good that it's a big band then. You know, honestly, we're pretty tough guys, you know, we're, we're blue-collar dudes. You wouldn't know dudes. it from looking at Tim, but we're pretty tough. From, from Boston, you know, so like the, the um, part of the reason that we've been able to survive all these years on, in the topsy-turvy world of rock and roll is because like the little things don't bother us so much, you know, like we're okay using porta potties and eating pizza <laughs> after the game. We're okay eating pizza in porta potties <laughs> if, if it has to happen for the show. <laughs> That's dirty. <laughs> so there's really not that much that make can nothing can keep us down, really, in that sense. Yeah. We like to tour. We do it whenever we can. Um, we, are, we all have um, exciting careers in other fields as well. But, uh, you know, we, we love the fact that we can still keep the boss tones going. Sure. What is it? What is your other career? You're a teacher, but what is your other career? Uh, I do like film and TV stuff. Currently, I'm managing some sound stages in the Hollywood area. That's awesome. Yeah. I live in Hollywood. Hey, friend. December was your 20th hometown throwdown. For those out there who don't know what that is, can you talk about it? The hometown throwdown started, as you say, there have been 20 of these events. They're, they're sort of multi-day um, festivals that take place in Boston. They started at a small club called the Middle East, and now we do three nights at the House of Blues in Boston, which is like a um, you know, 2,500 capacity nightclub. We invite our friends from all over the world. We've had um, bands from as far away as Japan join the Throwdown and Australia, and sometimes it's just local friends from uh, from nearby, and it's just sort of an opportunity to like um, celebrate the holidays, if you will, with our close uh, friends and family and our uh, you know our supporters in in the city of Boston. Of course. So, what has kept you doing this event for 20 years? I mean, that's a long time to be committed to doing that, and I think it's so awesome. People keep showing up, you know. Yeah actually put a lot of effort into those shows we uh, we put a lot of effort into the production this is something that Joe and Dickie and and some a lot of um, people that work with us they really it's it's almost like a year long preparation getting the bands getting a, you know coming up with a theme for what the shows are going to be um, designing all the production and the and the backdrops and and us designing the music and experience um, so it's it's something that you know we kind of in a way focus our year on. We really enjoy it, so we put a lot of effort into it.
you know, I noticed just from looking at your cheat sheet that the next question is actually for Ben. It is. Could I, can can I give up my mic? Ben. Ben. She has a question for you. I have a question for you. You're Thank you. I'm going to step out. You're my favorite. You are Thank my favorite. You. Hi, Ben. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So you are the dancing man in the Boston's. Your job yes, is am. essentially to dance. That's what I do. And you make me so happy when you're dancing. You have so much energy. Who gave you that job and how did that come about? That guy. That guy? Joe, no, who just left. Nobody gave him that job. No. He I just took it. <laughs> you invented it. They, uh, I was just a, like a member of, like the, of the friends group. We were just all hanging out. And I was kind of the roadie and I just sort of didn't go away. And I just jumped up there and hung out with the band on stage and it just sort of developed into what it is. That's cool. Yeah. How do you have the stamina to do that on long tours at night after night? Well, luckily we don't have to do it night after night anymore. <laughs> this summer. This summer, yes. Um, Red Bull, I think, will be my <laughs> my go-to for that. <laughs> Can you teach me one of your moves? I like how you flail your arms and stuff. Uh, I, not without music. No, I, no. I, I need the music <laughs> to get into the mood. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, so last question yeah. for both of you guys. Yeah, sure. Plaid is your guys' signature color on stage, but um, you have many other amazing stage outfits. Does somebody custom make your wardrobe? Uh, nobody. Well, we do have some, some wardrobe stylists that help us. Somebody very close to Ben, actually. His wife actually takes a big role in helping us design our onstage look. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we don't put a whole lot of effort into it, but she makes sure that we look good. Uh, she coordinates and makes sure that sometimes sometimes uh, she'll make sure that she gets us entire outfits for everybody in the band, or sometimes it'll be just a directive, you know, to wear a certain thing. Uh, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. We all have kind of suits and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely some thought goes into it, and we're supported by Ben's wife on that. That's so awesome. The jackets we're wearing tonight she made. Oh, so, which it, ones are you guys wearing the black and white ones or different You'll see. Ones? We'll see. Okay. You'll see. I like the black and white ones. Those are really nice. Oh, well, I love you guys so much. So thank you so much for taking the time thank to talk you. to me. I'm thank so you. excited to see you both play and for you to dance. Yes. I'll be up there. Hey, I'm Tim. I play saxophone in the Mighty Mighty Boss Phones. And I'm Ben. You're watching Last Rockers TV. Last Rockers TV.